Every robot setup I've done in the past has been with rails. The pros are that it's a single pick and drop point, easy to use, gravity fed, low cost. The cons, however, is that you need a fairly large area to put the rail, and you need two of them for your raw stock and your finished goods. Sometimes the rollers can even catch if you don't have enough weight or little chips get in there. For this build, however, I didn't have much space, just a table. Not a whole lot of room around here to put rails because I don't want to clutter the area. That's when I came up with the idea to make a table with pins and use the pins as a V so that the stock could be slid in between those two pins. I also thought that if those pins are stationary with a known diameter, I could calculate the center point of the stock depending on what the stock diameter is. Now, I've seen this done with hardware with two steel plates that are laser cut in the shape of a diamond, and then you put your stock in, you slide the plates apart or together, and it will center up the part to the same center point each time. However, I figured it's a UR robot. I can do this with software. For the build, I went to Lowe's and I picked up two 36 inch long pin boards. They were cheap, about $25 a piece. We'll call it 50 bucks for the whole thing. Then I came back here and I designed a 900 long spacer with a quarter inch hole in it, as well as a 350 diameter pin with a quarter 20 thread. I would then use these with a quarter 20 bolt to go through a sheet, the spacer on top of that, another sheet, and then the pin screwed on. So would tighten the two sheets together, make it more rigid than just the sheet by itself, and I would have a known datum. So I programmed and made about 100 of each of these components. One pin board takes about 40, but just in case I want to make another one in the future. Before I put everything together, I had to flip one of the peg tables over and grind off the tabs for a wall mount. I had to grind those all off, and so the other one could sit upside down over that and they could mesh together really well. I laid my bolt pattern, and then I put all the spacers in, laid the next sheet on top of that, and screwed on my threaded rods. I put one in each corner as well, and a few other spacers in the bottom row, just so that the table was extra rigid and it was held together securely. On the table, I drilled out two areas near the robot, and I tapped the table with the quarter 20 thread. I also made a special spacer that is the height of the hex on the bolt that goes between my peg table and the steel table so that the assembly sits flat and is in plane with the robot, close enough at least. Now that the entire assembly was finished, it was time to come over to the robot and program. Now on the robot, I set up a new program and put in a depalletizing function. I set my four corners and went through the wizard to set up my movements. I then verified that everything was good and working. I also decided to make a common regrip point on the other side of the table just so any alignment errors could be minimized. It'll go over there, regrip the stock, and it'll be true. So pretty much I know that the gap between my pegs is two inches to their center points, and I know my pegs are 350 in diameter. So for this table, I'm going to pretend that the center point to here is going to be A, and I'll call it an inch. And then from here, from the center point of the peg to the center point of the part is going to be the part radius plus the peg radius. And now all I have to do is calculate for side B. So we'll call that A and C. So we're just going to take C squared minus A squared and then square root those and we'll get our B. I then find the center point offset by subtracting the center point of the material I used to set up the pattern. Since I used a 3.95 diameter to set this palletizing function, my offset was going to be 1.903. Then this offset is converted to a point using the grid offset variable. The controller reads in meters, so this is why I multiplied by 0 0.0254 first. To input this offset, I copy reference point that is generated in the generated movements, and then I pose add my offset to the reference point and make this the new reference point. To find your reference point, look under any of the moves under the generated movements 
and you will find the feature and it will be probably just reference point but since I've done this more than once mine is reference point one you'll be able to find it. Now it's all done we can test the table and see how it works. So I've got a few different sizes of material here I'm going to show you real time what this is like to set up. First I have a uh, basically three inch, it's reading on the caliper 3020. Next, uh, I, this is faced on one side, so I'll probably use it, but the big diameter, the raw stock diameter here, is going to be 3.950. This is what I use to set up this pattern. And then this final piece here is 4.76, basically four and three quarter. All right, so since I have my four inch set already, I might as well use this piece here. Again, this is really 3.95, but four inch is 50 thousandths different. If you want to get it exact, actually I'll show you what happens. So for this material, if I put in 3.95, okay, and then I'm gonna run it. You may have heard that it, it kind of, it like you could hear it scratch against the pegs. It was really tight tolerance. Yeah. What I would prefer to do is put in 4.0. This will give it a little bit of clearance when it grabs and so it won't scratch against the pegs. You may not be able to tell, but there's, it's not scratching anymore. So for this material, I'm going to put in 4.75. It's really 4.76, but this is close enough. And I'm going to run this and I'm going to pause it at the bottom so we can see what happens. Okay, the, the part slid there, but if I push it back against, I can see there's even spacing on all three jaws. That's what I like. All right, again, even spacing all three jaws. All right, final piece here, three inches in diameter. We're gonna put that in, we're gonna put it here. 3.0, it's actually 3.02. Uh, again, these will not be able to grab this. We're just gonna look at the spacing. 3.0, run that. All right, so the robot reached its bottom limit. It's programmed to not ruck into the table. But I can tell here that the spacing is good. And you could probably also see that compared to when it was on the four and three quarter, this back jaw is back quite a bit more than it is for this three inch. I mean, it is shifting, it is doing the right thing. Just to get a few different angles there, I hope you can tell that this is really on center point and working. I hope you can see how quick and easy that is to set up and use real time. Um, this can also be achieved with diamond plate. What I was talking about earlier, if you just have sheets that are uh, cut like diamonds, like laser cut or whatever, it's a little bit different math, but it's absolutely doable. The triangle is just gonna be um, between the center point and the stock, the bottom of the diamond, and then wherever your part touches the metal and that's going to be your radius and that's also going to be the part radius so that's actually a little bit simpler math to do it that way if you don't want to mess with the table anymore also if you're worried about reliability the parts moving on the table angle it put it at an angle then you have gravity working in your effect and it's all sliding down into your desired datum points the other part about this is this was easy to set up for me because this is in line with the y-axis of the robot if it wasn't, that would be fine. 
you would just go into the you'd go into the controller and you would take your corner items it could be whatever side you want to do but basically go from one quarter item to the other corner item in the direction that you want your offset to be and find the vector of that make it a unit vector if you don't know how to do that that's in my uh, welding programming video I take two points and I make a unit vector out of it and then I do an offset based on that same concept you can just do it here like if this say was at an angle you could do uh, corner item one corner item two and then make a unit vector out of those two points that will then be your offset it would go it would go in this direction instead I hope you like this implementation it saved a lot of space for me I hope this code possibly solves a problem for you if you can implement it somewhere else.